The passage for this evening's message is Psalm 67, and I will read all seven verses, and I would like for us to hear now the Word of God. God, be merciful unto us, and bless us, and cause His face to shine upon us, Selah, that Thy way may be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise Thee, O God. Let all the people praise Thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For Thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Selah. Let the people praise Thee, O God. Let all the people praise Thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear Him. Psalm 67 is a prayer, as well as a prophecy. The prayer is for God to bless them. We see this in verse 1. The prophecy that we see here is that God will be known amongst all the nations. And we see this prophecy in other psalms as well. Psalm 22 verse 27, and Psalm 72, verse 14 and following. We see this promise that's given to the church of great enlargement and expansion of the church. And of course, uh, it is going to come uh, after the Messiah has come. It will come under the time of the new covenant when all nations will be beckoned to bow down and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. As a prayer, we see in verse 1, this is a plea for mercy. You know, you will never cry out for mercy until you understand or you sense your misery. And the thing of it is, is that oftentimes here in this blessed country that we have, we are so comfortable that we don't know that misery that some people are enduring. Right now, I understand uh, in Egypt, some of the Coptic Christians are being greatly persecuted. We ought to pray for them in Egypt. And we have persecution going on all over the world. They know the misery, their families being broken up and under persecution. And so we need to pray for God's mercy upon the church. Now, in this first verse, it says, God be merciful to us. And it's speaking here, the psalmist, of the church of the old covenant. Here, uh, the psalmist is crying out for God to have mercy upon His church. And this is a petition that ought to be in every generation. Every generation ought to be calling upon God's mercy to help them to do the work of the ministry in carrying out the work of the kingdom of God. Now our goal is to fulfill the prophecy. And the prophecy is, Let all the nations praise thee. That is the goal. Just like the Great Commission, we are to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. We should never lose sight of that Great Commission. We have our ministry in a local church, and that needs to be tended to. But we need to help expand And that's what this whole psalm is about. 
the enlargement of the kingdom of God. And it all starts out with God's mercy and our sensing our misery. He's calling out for God's blessing. One of my favorite scriptures is Ephesians 1.3, that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The greatest blessing that we can have is to have our souls regener- regenerated and for uh, us to be in Christ and uh, experiencing the spiritual blessings that flow from Christ through the work of grace that He works in us. The petition is also to, not only to be merciful to us, but, and to pour out this grace, of blessing, but also cause your face to shine upon us. Now you look at Israel's history, and you see many times they went against the Lord, and they paid the consequences for it. They were taken, taken captive. For 70 years. And we see throughout the time of the kings in the northern kingdom especially. For over 200 years I don't think there was one righteous king. And they were constantly being bombarded by their enemies. And the reason was is that they refused to go down to Jerusalem and to worship God. The way they were supposed to. They were not to be worshiping in Samaria. There were times uh, of spiritual refreshing when God was pleased to send blessing, and uh, such as uh, in Judah when Hezekiah became king and, and God's blessing was being poured out upon uh, Hezekiah so much that there were those from the tribe of uh, Simeon and Levi and uh, there were others that were coming down because they saw that God was with them. We want to know the shining of God's face upon us. That shining of God's face, very simply, is to sense His favor and blessing. May God give us that grace that we may see this, these petitions not only put before the throne of grace, but that we may also see the Lord answering our prayer. We need to pray that God would be pleased to grant us further, as we note in verses 2 through 5, to have a concern about the spread of the gospel. I know that all of us, uh, when we say the Lord's Prayer, we say, thy kingdom come. It would be good to do a, a, a very in-depth study on those few words because there's a lot packed in that. How interested are we concerning the advancement of the kingdom of God in our own lives? The advancement of the kingdom of God in our families? The advancement of the kingdom of God in our churches? But here in this psalm, it's talking about the advancement of of the kingdom of God, and this ought to be in our hearts as well, to the nations. You see, this, of course, was written before the time of Christ, and perhaps uh, it was a psalm that was written by David. Some think it was. If it was, this would place it sometime a thousand years before Christ. And they in the psalm are crying out that God would bring blessing upon the nations, that is, the Gentiles, they knew that uh, when Messiah came, he would come uh, to bring salvation to the Gentiles. And now here we are, 2,000 years later, after Christ has ascended to the right hand of God. That means something. Being at the right hand of God, that means that he is governing all things in heaven and in earth. Oh, that we had a heart that really longed to see the spreading of Christianity. True Christianity. Matthew Henry said, when the gospel begins to spread, it shall get 
ground more and more till it reach to the ends of the earth. That's what our desire ought to be. That's really the vision here that is being displayed before us in this scripture. We want the world to know the way of God through Christ, through the gospel. If we want to evangelize, we need to take note of verse 1, but having tended to that, then we move on into verse 2. That thy way may be known upon earth. The, word, the, the words the way was used in the book of Acts when it talked about uh, Christianity being preached. And some of them were just new to it and they called it the way. Of course, the way, uh, Christ said, I am the way. So this, the way in scripture has to do with Christ. It has to do with the gospel. Do we desire that the way of God, instead of the ways of all these other ideologies that are rampant all over this globe, would we rather that they all be put down and that Christianity should reign? And this is really what the focus of the psalm is. Is to raise up the way of God, which is a way of righteousness through Jesus Christ. We know that it has to do with the gospel because of what follows in verse 2. Thy saving health among all nations. And, and we see uh, throughout this psalm, the psalmist is very clear to extend this not to any certain people like it was under the old covenant to the children of Israel, but to all the nations. Oh, if that spreading health of saving health was spreading throughout the nations today, what a difference we would see on the world scene today. The saving health certainly has to do with propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Maybe we don't we won't be a missionary on the mission field. We don't have to be. We can all have a part in it by praying for the expansion of the gospel, the saving health among all nations. Now, the psalmist here, just like that word selah, means a lifting up. It, it actually... Uh, means that they're supposed to lift up their, their hearts and their voices as they sing, because this is to be sung. And uh, it is a song. It is a song. And when you see Selah, that means to lift up your voices, because it's like a crescendo. Those of you that know music, uh, how that uh, when you have a crescendo, you really bring out the sound. And it really goes into the heart. Music drives those words right into the very souls of men. We want to know about that way uh, to how we can get that gospel out to all nations. So that they will also praise and glorify God. Note verse 3. We want to see the nations called of God so that they can join in with us and sing praise to God. Verse 3 says, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Now when you see a duplication like this in a verse, this is uh, for emphasis. And it's, it's to let us to know that it is an all-inclusive petition that all of the people will truly lift up their hearts and sing praise to God. Now, when they have gotten to know the saving health, that is the gospel, 
that's when they're going to start singing. Uh, I'm sure that many of us have seen that or experienced that ourselves when we came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He puts a new song in our heart. And so all the nations uh, who are responding to the gospel by the grace of God, we will see this, this praise in their hearts. When one is at their height of happiness, it's usually when they're singing or whistling. Uh, have you ever noticed uh, perhaps someone in your family, uh, they don't normally whistle, but they're really happy this day, and so they're whistling, or they're very happy, or they're singing. And this is expressive of what this joy of the gospel will do in the hearts of those downtrodden people in those third world countries that don't have a clue about what the gospel is. And the only way that that uh, song can be put in their heart is that God should call them by the gospel with his saving health. When the Lord works work a grace in the hearts of people, he governs them as well. This goes for individuals. This goes for nations. Uh, the United States of America was blessed with many of the uh, early colonists that came here. They were God-fearing people. And uh, when they came here, uh, their principles were based on the Scripture. And so, here we see when the nations then began to know more about God in His Word and how that they are to submit to His judgment and uh, they are to walk up uprightly and righteously, they will find true joy. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously. I would like to say this too as well, that perhaps there is someone here this evening has felt, feels like that they have been wrong. And perhaps there's even a grudge being born in one's heart about a certain matter. What we need to do with that as Christians is give it to the Lord. Cast all your care upon, on Him. Because when we get angry and we take revenge, then we are acting, we are usurping God's authority uh, to judge. The Lord Jesus Christ, when He comes amongst a people in a nation, they will judge righteous judgment. And the reason why we're not seeing righteous judgment in our own country today is because we have forsaken the way of Scripture. And if we would see righteous judgment established in this country, we must return to the principles of the government of Scripture. We must recognize that whether one wants to or not, or whether a nation wants to or not, they are under the authority of King Jesus. The Lord is reigning at the right hand of God, and He's ruling over His church. But He's not letting the unbelievers just to run loose and, and let them do whatever they want. He is in control of them as well. Now, they're responsible for their actions, to be sure, but our comfort as Christians is this, is that there is one who reigns at the right hand of God in, in all of Stephen's persecution. He, before he was fully stoned to death, uh, he saw the Lord Jesus Christ standing, it says. So, what we need to note here is that if we stake, take a stand for the Lord, uh, He uh, will take a stand for us. And He will 
do righteously. He will govern the nations righteously. And by the way, the nations that do things that are contrary uh, to righteous judgment, uh, they will pay consequences. There will be consequences also, too. Because God is judge, and uh, He is the one who will bring judgment upon the nations. He is the one who now governs the nations upon the earth. And here we see that word sila again. Uh, again, it means to lift up. It's to lift up your heart with these very weighty and precious words in this psalm and to sing loudly so that these words may be emphasized in the heart of the hearers. But the desire for the calling of the nations of which this psalm speaks of and the enlarging of the kingdom of God is not so that we can be like Herod who wanted Christ to come into his presence so he could see Christ do some miracle. We would love to see a great visitation of God's Spirit upon the nations, bringing many uh, to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> For what reason? To give glory to God. Just think of uh, the nations that are without God, that need to be evangelized. When they are brought to faith, then they can join in this hymn of praise we read of in verse 5. Let the people praise thee, O God. Oh, don't you desire not only for yourself to praise God more, but, but wouldn't it be wonderful to see the nations that are living in darkness to come and know the saving health of Jesus Christ. And to be filled with such joy that their hearts would sing out with praise. And again, we see in verse 5, there is a duplication of this phrase, let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Again, it's to show the purpose of the expansion and enlargement of the church is so that God may more abundantly be exalted and praised and glorified. We know that there is nothing like a spiritual visitation wherein God is pleased to bring a spiritual renewing in our nation or to bring the gospel to a heathen nation. But we desire this that we may glorify God. But also, we note in verses 6 and 7, when God visits His people and calls in many, calls in the nations, there will be a time of not only great spiritual blessing, which we desire first and foremost, but also temporal blessings. We see this in verses 6 and 7. When those who have their hearts wrought on by the saving health of the gospel are made to praise Him and they submit to His Lordship, His judgment and His righteousness, you'll see them breaking forth into praise. But also in verse 6 it says, then shall the earth, the psalm is speaking of all the nations together. Just imagine what it would be like if all of them would sing praise to God. Then the earth will yield her increase. Now that's talking about the uh, temporal blessings of the crops in the field, the earth will bring forth 
or increase, and God, even our own God, uh, shall bless them. And this blessing here is also spiritual, a spiritual blessing of God's grace, of His gifts, of His salvation. God shall bless us. Now notice the last verse here ends with an acclamation that God shall bless us. It, be, it begins with uh, calling upon God's mercy, uh, praying that God would visit the people, the nations, with salvation. But in verse 7, it affirms that such blessing will come. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear Him. In Psalm 98 verse 9, we see how that Christ does reign over all. He says, the psalmist, before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth with righteousness, shall he judge the world and the people with his equity. God shall bless us, and all the earth, ends of the earth, shall remember and turn to the Lord. There are two verses that I'd have you to turn to, uh, and that is uh, Psalm uh, 27. Well, let's just turn to the verse Psalm 22, verse 27. This is a familiar psalm to all of us. Uh, it's the Messianic psalm. It has the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he uttered on the cross. But in this psalm, and it's all because of Christ's work on the cross that we find in verse 27, it says, All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship thee. And so in conclusion, I would like to say, first of all, if we would see God's blessing upon our churches today, we must beseech God's mercy every day. His mercy that He will bless us uh, with Salvation. He will bring new converts uh, to faith in Jesus Christ. Secondly, I would have us to understand here. As believers, we need to have a greater priority on the salvation of souls and the propagation of the gospel. We are blessed abundantly with temporal things in this land. And that is a blessing of God, not to be despised. But we want to note that the highest priority and concern that we have is the advancement of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ in His bringing forth that saving health of the gospel to the nations. We need to frequently remind ourselves, as I mentioned earlier, that we have a mandate given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ before He ascended into heaven. It was to go into all the nations, preach the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And so that mandate still stands. May God give us grace in our time, this space of time that we have, that we may advance the church by God working in and through us and our submitting to His will and purpose for us as individuals and as churches and as a nation. And in all of this, I don't need to tell those who hold to the Westminster Catechism that the most important part of all of this 
the chief end of all of this is to glorify God. That's our individual chief end in life. And it's uh, the chief end of us as a people and as a nation. That we may see more and more of people coming to praise God and to sing praises to Him for His salvation. As we are faithful to our calling, whatever that calling is, we need to be all involved in the advancement, the enlargement of the kingdom of God through prayer. And trusting that God will, as He says here in the song, bring salvation. Christ's mandate is to make converts amongst all peoples, lands, and nations. Because there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we may be saved. That call of the gospel goes out even tonight from Romans 10, 9 and following to those who hear this and who have that grace wrought in them. They can join in this psalm of praise and adulation of the name of God. That call upon sinners outside God's covenant of grace who have not trusted Jesus Christ, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Let us close with prayer.